What happened? What happened? Like... Dual track, this was the thing. We put up with the seven strings and the craziness and the noise and the weight and all. And then Prime was like, we were wrong. But the, the kind of cool thing is they admit it on their website. Like there's two YouTube videos that are on their actual site and, and one of the engineers is talking about it and he's like, we get it, the dual thing the seven strings like and, and and he says it in kind of an engineery way like getting things as simple as they can be tends to make systems more repeatable and more efficient and yada 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 i don't know i just felt like the nexus was a pretty cool bow and then meh meh prime throws the dual cam out the window last year was like a big change for hoyt and i feel like this year was a big change for prime the cam system is obviously something that I think we'll spend the most amount of time talking through in this video because when you go back to a standard kind of single cam, to me all of a sudden, Prime is competing directly with every other bow manufacturer that's out there. I know that they kind of are anyway, but like one of the things that I think has always set Prime apart was the dual track. It was just kind of a unique you know, yeah, it was just a, a super unique feature, especially these last few years. Everybody's running one thing and Prime's kind of in this other lane. And now all of a sudden I feel like they're all, you know, kind of in the same direction. Most bows, as you start to draw, the, the cable is basically on the outside of the cam. And at full draw, it's, it's pulling that cam sideways. What the, the Prime is doing, basically, the way they have the track lined up, the, the simplest way to say this is as you're drawing, the take up is actually pulling into the center, lining the cable up directly behind the string, directly centered on the axle. In line with the string, eh? Eh? In line? It makes sense. Like that was kind of their whole point was they wanted the they wanted the parallel cam system to try to uh, to try to make that happen anyway. They wanted as basically as centered. Uh, as centered of a system as you could get. Like they wanted the least amount of tension uh, g pulling left to right that they could get. So I think this was a logical next step for them. And it eliminates a crap ton of the complaints. Seven strings on one bow is a little crazy when the majority of manufacturers now have three. The dual track system is complicated. It is noisier. If I've had one bow this year that has had stuff get loose after I've been shooting it, it's the Nexus. And all of a sudden, you're shooting, and then, bing, little, little buzz, bing. Well, what the hell is this? And then I'm looking on both the cams, trying to figure stuff out, tighten up a few things with, a, with an Allen wrench. It's, maybe they've eliminated that. And that would, be, uh, that would be pretty cool. I have some speculation, though. And this is what I wonder, based on my experience shooting the bow for the first time. Left to right tension in the bow when I'm at full draw, I'm not necessarily noticing that there is left to right tension. But, but here's what I'm wondering. I'm wondering by eliminating almost all of that left to right tension, am I actually getting a less stable hold? Engineering wise, they've created something that in theory is more efficient because they're creating everything. It's, it's pulling directly in a straight line but what I'm wondering is, are they creating such a razor's edge by this kind of linear uh, force pattern? That's not even probably a word. I don't, I don't know. But this, this linear, maybe it is, this linear tension that they have created and they have virtually no left to right or the least amount of any bows. I'm just wondering, does that, does that give me a little bit more of the shakes? Because I'll, I'll be honest, when I was at the shop, I wasn't super impressed with the hold. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I still, again, I didn't own the bow. I didn't take the time with it to do it the right way, 100%, but I did put bars on it. I mean, I, I, I did do the things that I normally do when I go to a shop as far as trying to get the thing set up as close to what I would take it home to as possible. So this year they were doing inline one, the three, and the five. The one is a 31 axle to axle, the three is a 33, and the five is a 35. One of the things that I think is pretty cool, actually, is they have, uh, on the one, which is a shorter axle to axle, they've made the brace height seven. And then 
they've reduced the brace height down as the bows get longer because in theory you're kind of trading some stability. A shorter axle to axle bow is generally going to be less stable, a longer one is going to be more stable. The, the lower the brace height is, the distance between basically the throat of the grip and the string, the, the smaller that distance is, the faster the bow is going to go. The string is pushing the arrow farther, it's pushing the arrow for longer, so it's staying on the string longer, which contributes to any time you mess up and you are torquing the grip a little bit left to right or you're, you know, you're just making slight little changes to what you're doing between shots, a, a shorter brace height is less forgiving. So that's kind of cool that they have taken that into account and said on the short bow, we're going to do a longer brace height. So it, it's actually the longer the bow gets, the faster it gets. Their IBOs are, well, I'll just put the little graphic up on the screen so you can see it. One other thing that I thought was kind of interesting is in theory with this bow, it says on the website you can get from 30 pounds all the way up to 80 with any of the bows. 30 pounds draw weight all the way up to 80. So in theory, if you wanted to start with a prime and you wanted to shoot it your entire career from the time you were like an eight year old kid up until the time you were a grown adult, in theory, you could go from on the same bow from 30 pounds up to 80 pounds, just replacing the limbs. Another thing that Prime is going back to this year is a limb stop, not a cable stop. So the difference between a limb stop and a cable stop basically is like pushing against a, uh, a surface that has some give to it versus pushing against a concrete wall. Essentially, it's a, it's a bolt that is stopping on the, actual, uh, on the actual laminated material of the limb, which feels to me um, kind of horrible, if I'm honest, because I am impatient and my draw is much too fast. So I draw into the back wall really quickly and I like a little bit of forgiveness when I'm back there. Not like Hoyt in the past type of forgiveness where you would get back there and just be like, Bleh. The issue for me with limb stops is because I do this undisciplined fast draw, I actually start tearing my uh, tendons in my elbow, which is really stupid, but I do. That that hit at the back wall, the, the boom, that bump every single time creates a lot of tension for me. And then the other thing is it takes longer for the, the bow to me. It feels like it takes longer for the bow to settle in. Once I've had that initial hit into the back wall, like if I'm hunting and I draw in really fast, and it hits that back wall, all that tension is going forward into the bow and I'm a little shakier. That's personal preference. A lot of guys like it because it literally feels like you're just pulling into a concrete wall. Like you're, it's just super solid, there's no creep. A lot of people feel like the shot is just a lot more repeatable with a limb stop versus a little bit of that give that a cable stop is gonna give you. I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't a huge fan of my initial impression of the bow. I, uh, I've been shooting the 80 pound PSE from last year. That, that was my primary hunting bow this year. And I went into the shop to shoot the 80 pound uh, inline and I couldn't draw it. I literally could not draw the 80 pound inline. Now I'm sure that I could have just muscled all the way through and done it and, and maybe ripped some part of my body. But the draw on the front end is really stiff. Now it's it's relatively consistent throughout the entire thing, but it just felt really, really stiff on the front end. Maybe the bow breaks in. I've had that happen in the past before where after I shot something for a while, it, it was either I broke into the bow or the bow broke into me, I, whatever it was. And maybe that's the case with the inline, but my initial impressions were I would not order an 80 pound because I didn't like the way that I was having to manipulate myself to actually try to get it to draw. When I switched to the 70 pound bow, I was shooting it back to back with one of the other manufacturers who we will talk about. And it was so much louder. It didn't have a lot of vibration. It had a little bit, but like nothing that's gonna be super obvious and annoying, but it was loud. And I had a stabilizer on it and it had the dampeners on it, like the whole deal. But compared to this other manufacturer, it was loud obviously noticeably louder bow. So I have to be honest, I, I'm not that excited about the inline for this year. I'm gonna do some more research. I'm, I'm gonna go shoot it again at the shop, but I walked out having ordered one bow 
thinking I was probably going to order two. And I didn't. I didn't order the inline on, on the first go-round. I'm going to do some more research into it. I'm going to make sure that I'm understanding and I want to talk to... Uh, I may see if I can get one of the engineers to actually come on and explain the inline thing to me. And I, I want some answers on the the whole left to right tension jiggle thing that I'm talking about because are they shooting for a system that is actually making the bow more difficult to shoot is by lining that thing up on that razor's edge in the center are they essentially giving me a stiletto stripper heel to try to walk around in I was going to order some stiletto stripper heels for Jocelyn and then get some b-roll of her walking around in them and she said no she was not interested in being in one of my videos in stiletto stripper heels. So I'm sorry about that. By the way, I've been sitting here in my fanatic bibs because it's like it snowed like crazy in Nashville the last couple days. Uh, these things are freaking amazing. I know they're expensive, but the fanatic bibs, I literally will get up in the morning. The house is kind of cold. We don't have a fire going yet. And I will, in my boxers, just put these suckers on, walk around, make coffee, it's the end of the season and I fully plan on wearing these completely out, just using them as like house pajamas. I'm super impressed with these. Uh, that's all I got for the, uh, for the initial impressions on the inline. I, the jury's out, the jury's out, but I will admit I didn't order one and I was thinking I was probably going to. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Brandon McDonald.